What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is episode two of the Evo X engine build tutorials. In this episode, we are gonna be doing a complete short block assembly. Episode one, we are going through and measuring all the clearances. So the bearing clearances for the crank, or the main bearings, the rod bearings. We are checking the piston wall clearance and setting the piston ring and gap. Today we are gonna be assembling the short block, so getting the pistons into the cylinders with the rods already installed on them, getting the crank, into the block, getting the bottom cradle onto the block, getting all the torque specs done, oil pump and oil pan. I will have episode one and three and four down in the description box below. Three and four will be up later on, so as soon as they are uploaded, I will have them linked down below. My name is episode one. For some reason, I lost a bunch of footage, and on this episode, I kind of lost more than I hoped. I didn't really feel like making this because I'm going to re-record a lot of stuff and just go through and try to explain it to you guys, but I figured I made episode 1 already, I'm going to have to stick with it and just record a lot of stuff for episode 2. Obviously I can't go back in the car, tear the motor apart and show you guys what to do, so I'm just going to have to explain it, try to use hand gestures, whatever, to get it explained to you guys the best way I can. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you guys. The next step in this process is to go through, go through, re-clean everything, and start the assembly process. So I'm gonna go ahead, clean the block, clean the crank, clean the crank caps, pistons, uh, and the rods. Now that we have all of the components of the motor cleaned, we can insert the crank onto the block. But before we do that, we need to insert the bearings onto the block side. In this build, I am using the ACL race bearings. Obviously, they need to go in the same location that, they, that we removed them from when we measured everything out to make sure all the clearances are still within spec when we assemble. So insert the ACL bearings into the same location that they were in when we checked all the bearing clearances. Now we're going to use assembly lube. I prefer the red line assembly lube. It's like a red color. Very good stuff. It's what I've always ran. Get some of that assembly lube on the bearings. Now we can insert the crank onto the, onto the block. Okay guys, now that we have the crank in the block, it is now time to insert the crank bearing caps on, the main bearing caps on to the motor. So we need to put the ACL bearings back on the same caps that they were on when we measured all the clearances, just like on the block, <clears throat> excuse me, just like on the block, they got to go back in the same location. So we have all of the same clearances that we had when we measured everything out. So get the bearings inserted into the caps, use, once again, use the red line or your choice of assembly lube, put some on the crank, put some on the rod or the crank bearings on the caps insert the caps in location, they're all numbered one, two, three, four, five. Make sure that they are going in the proper location, guys. Very, very crucial. It is now time to get the main bearing bolts installed. In this build, we are using the ERP 2000s. Not 100% necessary for the power I am going with, but they are $130. And it's also, I'm pretty sure it's cheaper to use these instead of the OEMs. OEMs are one-time use only, guys. Make sure you do not use them more than once. They are a stretch to yield type of bolt. So make sure you replace these. I would just recommend picking up the ARP 2000s. Now if you get the ARP main studs instead of the bolts, you're gonna have to bring it into a machine shop and have the crank line board. So all of the bearing clearances are good to go. Once again, not sure exactly why it matters. Something to do with the way the torque of the, of the studs work. But that's just what I'm reading. That's what ARP recommends to do. So I would just stick with that. Now, it is very crucial that we get all of these torques down properly. There is a special torque sequence that we need to do when torquing down the crank. I will throw a picture on the screen right here so you guys can check that out. It's also in episode one if you need further detail. Feel free to check out episode one. I went through this in detail. So, check that out. Also guys, before you install the crank cap bolts, the ARPs that I'm running, if you're doing ARPs guys, they give you the ARP 
uh, what is it? What do they call it? A hardware lube or something? They include that with the package. OEM, I'm pretty sure you could run oil just fine. Just in regular engine oil. But with the ARPs, guys, use that ARP lube. So the next step is to get the pistons installed onto the rods. First thing we need to do is get a piston circlip inserted it into one side of the piston. It does not matter what side you get that piston clip into. As soon as you get that clip in, we can get the piston installed onto the rod. Before we do that, guys, we need to lube up the piston pin. So get some oil or assembly lube. Lube up the bearing. It's a little copper bearing inside the rod. Lube that up, set the piston onto the rod and slide the piston pin through. As soon as you get that on, get the circlip back into the other side of the piston. Now we need to make sure we are getting the rods onto the pistons the proper way. As we discussed in episode one, I'm not sure if it necessarily matters which way the bearing tanks go, but I was installing them the same way they came out. So with the motor facing me, the timing over here, the timing belt or the timing chain will be over here. So the front of the car, see the front of the car is here. We're gonna have piston one, two, three, and four. Bearing tanks will be to the back of the motor. Obviously, the arrows go to the front of the motor. On the CP pistons, there's no arrows. On the top of the top of the piston, the piston dome, there's valve reliefs for the valves, so when it turns over, the valves don't hit the pistons. The bigger ones are the intake valve reliefs, so those go to the front of the motor. The black ring is the middle ring. There's an N on the top of the ring that goes up and the silver ring goes on top with the end facing up also. So here's a quick overview. Top ring is silver with the end facing up. Middle compression ring, or the bottom compression ring, the middle ring is black with the end facing up. Now that we got the pistons installed onto the rods, got the clips in, the piston pin in, all that's good to go. Make sure the rods are on the proper way. We can now install the piston rings onto the piston. I will have a picture on screen of the piston ring layout. So where the ring end gaps sit on the piston. Very crucial to have these in the proper position. You do not want any of the ring end gaps lined up. As far as piston ring placement goes, the oil rings, it doesn't matter. You can have them either way, top or bottom. There's not, there's not a top or bottom to the oil rings or the oil expander ring. So there's these two really thin rings. Those are the oil rings. And then the oil expander ring is the wavy, kind of like a spring looking ring. And then the two compression rings, the top one is the chrome or silver looking one. And the second compression ring is the black iron ring and there will be a marking that goes to the top of the piston for the rings. On these rings, it's an N. On a lot of rings, there would just be a dot, and that always faces to the, to the head. So top of the motor, the dot goes up, or the marking goes on, on the compression rings. I'm gonna wipe down cylinder one real quick with brake cleaner again. Get her, make sure it's nice and clean, and also wipe down the piston. Now we can pull off this bottom cap. And we're gonna be actually using WD-40 to lube the cylinder walls uh, instead of engine oil. Definitely do not use assembly lube here. I'm gonna go with WD-40 because it helps the rings seat a lot quicker than regular engine oil. So give the cylinder a, a little spray. Nothing major. And you can just wipe it around. Make sure your fingers are clean. Also, put some on your piston ring compressor. Now we can just set that ring compressor on top. Make sure you're putting the piston in the correct way. We can slide the bottoms of the skirts out a little bit so we can get everything lined up. Now we can simply just push the piston into the cylinder wall. Just like so guys. We can go ahead and now move on to cylinder two, three, and four. All the same process. 
Uh, clean up the cylinder wall, WD-40 it, slide the piston in. Same process for all four cylinders, guys. All of the pistons are now installed into the cylinders with the rods on them. I have the caps off there. Uh, that's one, two, three, four. Make sure those go back on the rod they came off. So now, guys, I'm just gonna flip this motor over. I'm gonna flip it over and get the rods, the rod caps on and torque. Now that we got the pistons down into the cylinder walls, we can flip the motor over as I already showed you guys. Now it's time to get the rod caps on. We need to have the bearings installed as they already should be because we checked all the, the bearing clearances with the plastic gauge. We made sure all the bearing clearances are good in episode one. Feel free to go check that out. Now guys, it is very crucial to have the rod caps go back on the same rods they came off and the bearing tang, the little slot where that holds the bearing in, goes to the bearing tang on the rod. Make sure you guys get these rod caps on the same way they came off. Before we thread in the ARP bolts for their ARP 2000s for the, for the rod caps, we use the ARP loop or the fastener loop. This just ensures we get the proper torque spec on the rod bolts or the rod cap bolts. Now if you guys are reusing your OEM rods, make sure they go back in the same cylinder they came out of. I believe that they are marked from the factory, so it would be one, two, three, four. But if they're not, obviously make sure you mark them and put them back in the same cylinder they came out of. So for the rod torque specs, the OEM bolts go to 44 inch pounds. I believe, let me double check this. So 44 inch pounds, you go one bolt 44 inch pounds, second bolt 44 inch pounds, then you step up to 15 foot pounds on the one bolt, next bolt goes to 15 foot pounds. And this is only for OEMs. You mark it with a paint pen and then you torque it another 90 degrees. Now for ARPs, you do the 44 inch pounds, then 15 foot pounds, and the final torque spec is 30 foot pounds. And that is with using the ARP uh, hardware lube or the bolt lube they send you in the package. Use either one you need to, I don't know if you're using ARPs or the OEMs. If you're using OEMs, you torque it at the 90 degrees. ARPs, you do the 30 foot pounds as the final torque spec. Alrighty guys, we are now ready to install this bottom plate or the cradle as Mitsubishi calls it. So make sure the gasket surface is clean on the cradle, clean on the block. And we are actually, there's not a gasket, it's a sealant, like an RTV sealant. So make sure this is all clean here and we're gonna be applying sealant on this surface here. it all nice and clean and I'm using the three bond 1215 sealant and there's probably a million different sealants you could use you can order the OEM Mitsubishi stuff you can use three bond We're gonna let that sit for about five minutes and then we're gonna install the cradle on to the block. I am now gonna install the cradle onto the motor. And before installing these bolts to hold the cradle to the motor, I'm gonna throw just a tad bit of, of this uh, assembly lube on it, or the ARP hardware lube. 
just to ensure that that they thread it nice and easy. And I'm just gonna tighten these hand tight for now. Super just snug them up. Nothing tight at all. I am gonna let that sealant set in for about a half hour and then come back and torque down all of the bolts to the proper spec. Okay guys, it's been a half hour. We let that set. Now it is time to torque down these bolts. Uh, there's also an order on here too. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six. And they all go to 19 foot pounds. Now we can install the oil pump. Just set it up on there like that. Grab your bolts, wipe them down. Put the bolts on there. And we can also install a chain. And they say to have cylinder one at top dead center when you install a chain. Go ahead and snug up these bolts for the oil pump. All of the three oil pump bolts go to 20 foot pounds. And that sprocket bolt goes to 17 foot pounds, which you're gonna need a holder for, most likely. You could probably get it away without using one, but I'd recommend using one. I'm gonna try it without. This is not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to get a torch without one. So yeah guys, you can definitely do it without it. Just hold the opposite side of the crank. I just th threaded a bolt in there and held it. We are now ready to install the oil pan. So I'm gonna clean up that gasket surface. With brake cleaner, like I use on everything. Just get all the, all the oil off there guys. Before I install the oil pan, I'm gonna throw this oil pump. Uh, tensioner on.
I'm just gonna snug this guy up. Torque spec on this is like 30 inch pounds or something, so it's very, very little. Snug that up like that. I can now apply some of the same gasket sealer I used down here up on for the oil pan. Just make sure everything's clean before you, before you do. While that's setting a little bit, we can clean up the gasket surface on the oil pan. So now that the sealant has sat for a bit and settled, we can go ahead and install the oil pan. Make sure the gasket surfaces are very clean. Set it down on there like that. There's four bigger bolts, eight millimeter thread, and then there's like 10 or so small, uh, six mil threaded bolts. So same thing as before, we're just gonna set them in and snug them up for now. Now we're gonna let that sit just like before. With down here, we're gonna let that sit for about a half hour, then come back and torque everything. While that oil pan is setting, we can throw this rear main cover on. If you bought the OEM kit, the gasket kit, it comes with the old plate with the seal in it. There's that. Same as before, wipe off the gasket surfaces with brake cleaner. And we can apply that same sealant to the case. And now we're gonna let that sit for a few minutes. Okay, and throw this cover on. I highly recommend either using a little assembly lube or oil. I personally recommend oil for seals, so get a little oil on the seal here, some on the crank, and it should slide on a whole lot easier. Just be sure not to get it on the gasket surface like I almost just did. A little bit there. A little bit on the seal. Take a look around the seal, make sure it's not folded anywhere. And we can let it sit just like that for a few minutes. The torque specs on the oil pan. The 12 millimeter heads are 22 foot pounds. So the, the eight millimeter, the eight millimeter threaded ones are 22 foot pounds. And all the small 10 millimeter heads, the six millimeter threads are, what were they? 89 inch pounds, so not much at all.
And we can now thread all these bolts in and we're gonna put those at 89 inch pounds also. Okay guys, that is gonna wrap up episode two. This one was a bit longer than I hoped, but oh well. Hopefully there was some very helpful information in here. As always guys, if you have any questions or comments, suggestions, anything, leave them in the comment section below. I hope you got some valuable information out of this guys. Stay tuned for episode three and four. Of course, I'll have them linked in the description box when they're up. Episode one is already linked down there, so feel free to go check that out. Leave a comment on there or a question on that episode if you have any questions regarding anything in that video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, thought it was helpful, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button down below and I will see you in the next video.